Today we're going to take a really quick look at the Creality 6R, CR6 SE printer. Um, it's a newer printer, so there's some really cool features included, little upgrades that you typically would make after owning it for a little bit, but they've decided to include all those features right out of the box. So we're going to get to the unboxing and take a quick look at this printer. So just cracking the box right open, uh, we do have a user manual that includes all the assembly instructions, warranty card couple of little doodads and uh, this little guy that you might want to pay attention to regarding the start G code. Um, there's actually not that many parts to it. We have the actual LCD display, carry handle that goes up top, and the filament holder, a roll of test filament, and then down below all this is the actual printer itself which comes in two pieces, the base section and the gantry. As far as I understand, there's only a handful of screws to put the whole thing together. So we're going to go ahead and do that because I don't want to bore you with the details of putting it together. It's all outlined in the manual. And once we get it put together, we're going to take a look at the printer and see what makes this. So thing here so she great. is. She's fully assembled. Um, the assembly process is pretty straightforward. So on the gantry section, there are a couple of flats milled into the machine. So you know that you're in the right place. It pretty much locks it in there. Uh, there's two screws on either side. On the screen, there's two screws uh, that hold the screen to the body. One wire that plugs in from behind. Uh, as far as the cable holder, just kind of snaps in place. And then two screws and two T-nuts hold in the, um, this carry handle that's up there. Uh, as far as wiring goes, pretty straightforward. I'm going to try to turn this around right here. So everything is pretty much taped down where it's supposed to be. There is, let's unplug this. My cable's a little short. There are cables for the two motors down here. Um, there's this longer cable one of the connectors plugs in here and obviously the longer section with these little cable clips that I got to kind of clean up um, plugs into the actual print head and there's one last cable on the opposite side here and that is right there for the uh, for the sensor for the z-axis um, so a few things that makes this really cool printer uh, the reason I wanted it. It wasn't the build volume. The build volume is pretty modest 235 millimeters uh, by 250 tall but there they included a few features that are pretty um, Pretty handy to have so first and foremost you do have tensioners on all the belts one there one there and I believe there May be another no, there's not so you do have an x-axis and a y-axis tensioner um, right out of the box makes it super easy to uh, tension your belts properly or adjust tension if needed. Um, you do have a little tray right here and they've included a few accessories to get you started. One being the spatula, allen wrenches for assembly, um, spare nozzles and clips for the Bowden tube up there. You got the wire cutters an SD card here which I'm guessing probably also has a um, a test file on it that's an 8 gig which is plenty for what most of us are going to do a USB to SD card reader uh, this right here actually looks like a wrench for the if I'm not mistaken it's a wrench for the um, for the nozzle I actually haven't looked at the manual on that and then just another little wrench for whatever else you might happen to need on the printer. Um, and of course, one nozzle cleaning um, needle pick, call it what you want. So that all stores away very handily within the printer itself. Another really cool feature. Um, the bed itself, if you do happen to need to replace or remove the bed for any reason, these two little clips will loosen, the little cams, the bed lifts right out. You can pop in a new bed if you want to change to a different type of glass. 
whatever the case is, close it back up and you're ready to go. They protected the wiring going to the bed because it's going to be moving back and forth with a little boot back here, which I do appreciate because uh, obviously we've all experienced an issue here and there with hotbed wiring. Um, the coolest feature, and that's something that I'm going to explore right now as I turn it on, is that it is self-leveling. There is a little IR sensor down in there that will self-level this printer. And for most beginners, that is the most frustrating part, is trying to level the print bed. With this, it should be a couple of buttons and it should level itself. So we're going to try that out. Um, other than that, I do know that this printer does have a 32-bit motherboard, meaning that it has upgraded steppers, which are, I believe, soldered onto the motherboard, so it should be very quiet as far as operation goes. And um, I do know they've made a few other upgrades. I just can't remember them off the top of my head, but everything here is really, really good quality. I mean, the base section itself is surprisingly heavy. Uh, you know, nice thick metal that they've used for everything. The belts are actually made by Gates. They're not no-name knockoff belts from any, from just anywhere. They're, you know, automotive grade grade rubber for this. So, they they actually haven't spared any expense. Um, even on the handle itself, you would think it's going to be plastic. It's aluminum. So, I mean, very solid built printer. Um, so we're going to fire it up. I'm going to play with auto leveling a little bit and then show you how it works. All right, so we got the machine on. Um, I've already loaded filament. I'm not going to go through the whole thing, but uh, if you go to the prepare menu, you'll preheat, obviously, to be able to feed your filament. Um, there is right over here a uh, filament runout sensor that you'll feed your filament through into the extruder. And this actually has a little cam locking system as well for tensioning. Um, once that's done, obviously feed it through and then you can always do a feed to get the last uh, to get it kind of going out of the print head but the feed is actually manual so you type in how much you need press OK and then hit feed and it'll do it um, so let's get out of this menu oh so I just wanted to go over the coolest feature I think is the self leveling and I actually do believe that the self leveling is not by an optical sensor, but I think it is the print head itself or some combination thereof. Um, because that over there, that little blue light that you see is controlled through the menu here where it can be turned on and off. So I'm not sure exactly how they're achieving the self leveling, but I know that if I press the level button and I hit auto level, Basically, it'll just, once it's up to temperature, which is 120 degrees for the printer, it'll start to uh, self-level. And it's going to run through 16 points of self-leveling. Once it runs through that, then it'll be done, it'll be leveled, and it'll be ready to print. Very simple. I mean, it could not possibly get any simpler than this. And there are actually no adjusters on the bottom for trying to level the bed. So the print bed itself should be a lot more stable and secure because it's not moving around on springs. Um, so you should be able to get better quality prints out of this simply with the fact that this is sitting on a, um, a little warm, but this is sitting on a solid bed here. So there's no, there's no give to it in any which direction. Um, so I'm gonna let this run through really quick and then we're gonna pop in the SD card and see if they've given us any test files or anything like that for us to try out. So after it's done, you'll just hit back. It just kind of sits there once it's done. It'll, the print head will move back to the center, but it doesn't really give you a message. I'm sure they might fix that in later firmware. But um, if you do need to adjust, you can definitely adjust in fractions of a millimeter to get better adhesion, less adhesion, whatever it is that you're, what you're after. Um, so just to go over, because it was a little hidden, but there is a SD card port right here in the front, along with a USB port, and those are going to be what you're going to use for feeding this thing your information, and I'm going to see if it doesn't look like there's actually anything on this uh, SD card, so we're going to slice a file, um, maybe just a uh, Benchy and see see how it looks once it's all done. So as promised, here's the Benchy that I printed off of this printer. Um, this was no modifications done to the printer, simply auto level and just print. You can see that on this version, there's actually some text on the bottom that's also visible. So it did a pretty good job at 
at uh, rendering that text even with it having a textured surface. Um, I do have some issues with Z seams, but that's more than likely a slicer setting and nothing else. Other than that, you can see that the uh, CR6 SE does indeed produce some quality prints right out of the box. Uh, probably one of the better benches I've, I've actually not seen but been able to print. So yeah, there you have it. Um, as a side note, there are, um, there are some reports of issues with the earlier printers and it seems like most of those issues have been taken care of. I had no issues with, uh, with leveling or with, um, you know, any kind of issues with heating up or anything like that. And I did open up a couple of panels and it looks like they did apply a couple of fixes for the power switch and the issue where it was, uh, shorting out on the USB connector. So seems like they've addressed most of those issues and this is as of December 2020 is when I got my printer. I'm not sure how far back it goes, but I do know that they are replacing everything that um, that does have an issue, but do go with a reputable seller like Comgrow US. Um, they are very on top of getting back to you. I even asked if my printer should have any issues and if I should be worried. They were right on top of getting back to me right away and I've heard that Customer su uh, support or customer service with some of the other sellers is shady or spotty at best. So um, definitely pick a good seller, get it from a reputable uh, store, and have fun.